Bobby Lee Claremont and the Criminal Element by Jeannie Mobley. House of the Good Shepherd, Chicago, Illinois, 4.07 p.m. Sister Mary Magdalene, ma'am, I didn't expect to see you, I said. My voice coming out in the same squeak I had given Dean O'Banion. I imagine not, she replied, her angular face registering no pleasure at all in our meeting. I doubted I looked all that overjoyed either. You have caused a great deal of trouble, Robert Claremont. I hope you know that. A great deal of trouble. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. I will replay, repay the poor box, I swear. Don't swear, Robert. Sit down. She moved to the chair behind the desk and lowered herself into it. This didn't bode well. We seemed to be settling in for a long talk. Reluctantly, I walked to the chair opposite her and sat. Explain to me, if you can, why you ran away, Robert, she said, her eyes burrowing into me. I squirmed and looked away. I'm waiting, she said, in that tone that meant she wouldn't wait much longer. I wanted to get out on my own to start over. Now that Mammon is gone, there seemed no reason to stay in New Orleans. But all your friends are there. It's your home. I shook my head. I've got no friends. No friends? And what exactly am I? And Sister Bernadette and all the others? Um, nuns? I said, daring a glance at her face. Immediately I knew it hadn't been the right answer. Still, friends? I had never thought of them as my friends, though they had fed me and cared for me and stood by me at my mother's funeral. I lowered my eyes to the hands in my lap again. I'm sorry, sister. I just wanted to be on my own someplace new. Some place where a reminder of my mother wasn't waiting around every corner. I didn't say this last part, but as usual, I didn't have to. Sister Mary Magdalene could read my every thought. You can't run away from the fact that she's dead, Robert. The words were so blunt that they knocked the wind out of me like a swift jab to the gut. Your mother will be with you no matter where you go, because she loved you. I nodded again. I know. Her eyes were still hard upon me. I could feel them like pins in a butterfly. Now I hear you want to be a criminal. I suppose you thought you'd steal from a poor box, from the hungry mouths of widows and orphans, to prove yourself. And these bruises, you've been fighting in a back alley, haven't you? And for what? All to prove yourself to those filthy gangsters terrorizing the good people of this city? It's not like that. I wasn't planning to hurt anyone. But even as I said it, I wasn't sure. Had it been like that? Could I have really ever believed that I could be a criminal and not hurt anyone? I knew better now, after my long two days with Nanette and her helpless baby. Sister Mary Magdalene shook her head, her lips pursing in disgust. I had thought more of you, Robert E. Lee Claremont. I had always thought, despite everything, that there was good in you. If your mother were alive, you would kill her all over again with this. I didn't kill my mother, I shouted. Surprising the sister so much, her eyebrows nearly disappeared up into her wimple. Then the corner of her mouth gave a little twitch, fighting her granite complexion for a smile. I'm glad to hear you say that, Robert, she said, her tone mild. You are? You've always been special to me because I've always known you were her angel of mercy. Not only did you save her mother's, your mother's life, but more importantly, you saved her soul. I stared at her, my mouth hanging open. Special to her? Me? Perhaps the long train ride had addled her brain. Ah, oh, your mother was a wild thing in her youth. A bit too free with the gentlemen. You know how those types of women end up, forsaken by their families, living on the street, reaping the wages of sin. Mammon wasn't like that, I said. It was an accusation I had heard often enough as a kid without a father, and I had given more than one beating to kids who dared suggest it. I couldn't give a beating to the sister, but my hands curled into fists all the same. No, she wasn't, because she had you. From the moment you were born, she changed her ways. I think you were the first person who loved her with a pure love, and she loved you back with her whole heart and soul. You gave her joy and happiness and a reason to live an honest, clean life. Yes, the Lord works in mysterious ways, and you are one of the most mysterious works of all. With that... That twitch at the corner of her mouth performed a miracle, turning stone to flesh, and she smiled a true big smile, the kind that catches in the corners of the eyes and crinkles them up and makes them look like they're laughing. 
For a moment, I thought she was going to reach out and tousle my hair. The sheer horror of the possibility nearly knocked me out my chair. Fortunately, she seemed to realize what was happening and got a hold of herself. She cleared her throat and tipped up her chin so she could look at me down the long length of her nose. I have some business to attend here in Chicago tomorrow. You will assist the good sisters in the orphanage here to keep out of trouble and to repay them for their hospitality. We will return home on the first train after my business is complete, she said, the crisp, stern tone right back into her voice where it belonged. I breathed a sigh of relief. Yes, ma'am, I said. Then I remembered what that business was and the huge favor she was doing to Nette LeBlanc. In light of the new softer sister I'd seen, I couldn't help venturing a question. How did you get the police to call Sergeant Hayworth home? I asked. Fortunately for both of us, his captain is a moral man. He did not want an innocent woman to hang any more than you did. And what about the marriage record? I asked. She frowned. Again. The Lord works in mysterious ways, Robert. That's all you ever need to know. Now I believe Sister Bridget needs your help in the nursery. Thank you, sister, I said as I stood. She nodded once and I turned to leave, thinking to myself that she wasn't such a bad old bird after all. And Robert, she said, stepping, stopping me in my tracks before I could reach the door. Yes, sister, don't think any of this absolves you from paying back the poor box. We'll be discussing your full penance when we get back to New Orleans. Yes, sister, I said and slipped out the door fairly certain that the payback was going to extend well beyond the handful of change I had originally taken.